Welcome in, hockey fans. It is another player profile from the goal out. As you can see, I'm still at the Air Force Academy. <laughs> I've got Blake Bride with me. Blake, um, I want to start right with you on the first thing first, which is growing up, learning to play hockey in Colorado, being a Colorado kid, um, Broomfield? Yep. Okay. Look at that. I got that right off the get-go. Uh, tell me about that and, and what it was like. Um, so, you know, take it. No, I can All right. Away. So, Colorado, uh, it's not the, it's a growing hockey place. You know, right. we're getting in the, uh, growing up, I really just watched hockey. Like, I started when I was eight, a little later than most. Um, and I really didn't know much about the hockey world outside of it. I just played low-level clubs, just got my foot in the door when I was younger, just got the feel for the game and, uh, the love for the game. Um, so, ended up going through and, uh, you hear about the as you grow up. You hear about the bigger teams in Colorado, like the Thunderbirds. So yeah. they're always the highlighted program here uh, for development wise. Uh, so I never I got to play with her one year when I was really young, when cheaper, easier. Um, and then after that, I, I I always thought about it, wish I played there, but um, couldn't afford or do that stuff. So I uh, I stuck with the high school options and uh, stayed around here and. Uh, Looking back on it, I, I can't complain at all. I love it. Um, the great memories I had, the call, the high school experience, and still being able to play other sports, yep. uh, that gave me that freedom to do a lot more here, and uh, that was nice. And obviously, I wished to went go further, so I ended up leaving and going and play juniors elsewhere. But I do love my time here in Colorado. I had that whole high school experience, which is uh, it's growing right now. Colorado high school hockey's yep. growing. We're trying to get it a little higher on the pedestal. It's not. It's not quite there yet, but we're, we're building it up, and I like to see the growth there. So I was told that maybe you need to have a hyphenated last name because I heard you were part of the Slavin family as well. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, um, I was uh, taken in by them. Uh, Josiah and I we were best friends since I first started hockey. We were on the team together that first year, and uh, ever since we were uh, been best friends. Uh, just had his wedding this last summer. I was right. the best man, so... I, uh, I I associate with them. I had a room in their house and stuff like <laughs> summers. I, I was a slavin. My mom knew it. Um, <laughs> she wished I was uh, home a little more, but it was hard to take me away because I I was so close with all of them. Like I still keep up to date. Called Josiah yesterday, watching Jacob's games. So it's like the whole family. They're all hockey players too, <laughs> from the oldest to the sister who was one of the best players in my opinion. Um, She's so really good. I've seen she was play. great. So. <laughs> You know, just the whole family and how they embraced and how we connected. It was, it was amazing. And yeah, they they are my family. <laughs> so, how did that help you develop your game? Because obviously, the talent level there is incredible, as you mentioned. But how did that help you improve as a hockey player? Uh, it added a lot because it gave me that next level. I got to see Jacob playing yep. uh, juniors when he was with the Chicago Steel there, and like that development there. Got to get on the ice with him in the summer and see the level he was at. Right. See where they're at. See Jordan, where she was playing Division One at North Dakota, and mm -hmm. see her skill set. And it was just they're down, and like the whole family had such a drive. They were so they're always elite hockey players, no matter where they were. So just being around them, skating with them, and just that presence and care for hockey, being engulfed in that so much really helped me drive more into it, and it grew my love of the game there for sure. And you're talking a little bit about the way you uh, kind of went up the system, played high school hockey, then you played NHL, then you went USHL, yeah. now you're at the NCAA level. Um, for people that are watching this, maybe kids that are growing up, it's something that can be done, isn't it? Yeah, it's, um, it's a different path. Uh, it's one that I think is uh, not, not as well known as most. I, everyone thinks of the AAA straight to the higher leagues and in. Um, but you're not always at your best when you're growing up. You don't always have, you always have room for development. So like, I played Bantam A two years in a row. I wasn't able to make double A teams. Uh, I wasn't able to make null teams my first year. I went to uh, EHL to get a development year in, right. just because I love the sport. And uh, the thing is, it's just you really, what you could do in one year is amazing. Yep. And like. You don't need to always be at the highest level because that might not be where you're ready for. I think it's more of being where you're comfortable at and where you could advance your game best, and that's not always the highest levels. Maybe it'll help you get to the highest levels, but early on I think it's all mostly about development and just 
be in a leg being in a league where you could best develop your skills and not over push yourself and find a way to learn your strengths learn who, who you are as a player so you know i i think about that and i think uh, a lot of kids get discouraged by that right if you don't make it um at the triple a or the double a and, and you get frustrated and you kind of back away from it. obviously that's not you um you've obviously found your way through it but what do you tell a kid out there right now that's going through that? And uh, how do you get through mentally where it's tough being cut from a team? I've had it happen to me many times. It's yeah. not easy to bounce back, but clearly you're, uh, you're living proof. Yeah, for me, it's just it's mostly just that bounce back is that fuel, that drive. I mean, it's like you get fuel for the fire, like you get built up. If you get cut from a team, it's doing everything you can to prove that they made the worst decision of their life. Yeah, I like that's it. my thing. It's like... I always looked at it like, oh, they didn't they didn't think I was good enough. I'm going to prove to them why they're wrong. And it's just it's just sort of like being doubted and it gives like gives me more drive and stuff. And it's like something that you could use and build cuz it's it's all about getting that confidence in yourself and like finding who you are. And I mean, doubters do help. So I I I actually that helped me out a lot actually having people maybe not think highly as I thought of myself and just proving them wrong and proving them who I am as a player and a person. Okay, you get to the Air Force Academy. Um, tell me a story about the Air Force Academy right off the get-go because some of your teammates have told me what that 40-day uh, uh, day boot camp or whatever it is is. Uh, what was it like for you? That was <laughs> the weirdest experience of my life. I mean, it was day in, day out. You didn't know what day it is. You're always tired. You're angry, but you can't yell. You got to do this. And it's just, it turned into, I was actually lucky enough to have a kid on the team with me. Right. One of my good buddies, Mitch Walensky, he ended up leaving. But we went through it together, and it was just like, you couldn't have fun. And <laughs> we both like to have fun. So it was a problem of just, like, learning all those little things they're trying to teach you. They're going to try to break you down here and there and, like, you you get kids who are younger than you yelling at you and you're like are you kidding me so it's just <laughs> take it with a grain of salt try not to say anything back it was more like just understand where you're at and uh some some weird things happened i mean we 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 always got yelled at we'd get like <laughs> weird tasks where we'd have to like spray our soaps and like when we're in the hallway getting ready to shower and then we get yelled at and then we try to dance, we get yelled at, and it's just turned into like this whole mess of just trying to find little parts to enjoy of your life during it because they're breaking you down so much. And yeah. it's, I mean, looking back on it now, it's so funny to look at the stories, the experiences. Like, the worst, worst thing in my life, I'd say, is the tear gas that we did. And I, <laughs> I will never do that. I don't want to ever do that one again. But that was like, but looking back, it's like, I got to do some cool things. Right. And, I went through a lot to prove where I am today and it's like when you're when you're on the other side of it it's it's kind of you look at your buddies who you went through it with and you laugh you there's stories that you see you're like what why did that even happen and just so I it's it was a it was an experience we made it through and now I look at it like all right that was I, I could do it it was worth it <laughs> okay so uh coach territory always tells me he goes you know don't tell the guys this so I'm going to tell you something oh, uh he always says that uh uh, up on the hill is the hardest part of their day. I think when they get to the ice, they can finally relax and enjoy themselves. True or not true? That is very true. <laughs> you're, you're up there during the day doing school, military stuff, marching, all this stuff, in the, and it's just torturous. And then when you get down here, it's like you finally get that sense of relief. You get all your close friends because you grow together as a team, like the family, and then it's just you can have jokes, relax, get on the ice, do something you love. So it's just like that – all that stress goes away, and it's just you come down and you just get in your element of something that you love to do, you care about with the people you love, and it's just whole new game. So it's like whenever you're down here, it's it's always the best time of the day and everything, and you you don't want to leave you don't want to leave the rink. That's basically the moral of it. Well, right now you got a beautiful facility, you got a new locker room this year, and uh, I, I know you guys spend a lot of time there because who wouldn't? But um, talk about how. Air Force builds a hockey team that is always there in the end. Uh, last year was a little bit more difficult with COVID, but yeah. you guys always seem to peak at the right time, which is NCAA tournament time. Yeah, it's it's just about development through the year. Um, like this year, we have young young players, but like overall, they always build in a group that that has fight, that has determination. It's not like 
the most skilled teams, but it's it's teams who are like gonna go and try and block every shot possible. It's it's that it's that mentality of maybe we're doubted, but they don't know who we are. They don't know like what we have on the inside because it's not always about the flashiness. It's about the the care for the game, the love for the game, the compassion, the heart, and it's just that stuff this team develops over time and as you grow closer together as the team gets near the end we just you start to find who you are how we want to play as a team the systems we're in and that's why we start i think at the end of the year is we always see us on the uptick getting better and better and a team that hopefully no one wants to play on the when we're starting to make playoffs cuz we're going to play them and we're going to make it hard on them they're going to they're going to have to beat us one way and it's it's not going to be outworking us uh, Folks, now you know why this kid wears an A on his uh, jersey because uh, that is uh, th- that's teamwork uh, from the very top and and uh, leading by example, I guess, is what I'm getting at. But um, you guys have another challenge ahead of you coming up: four games, five days. Um, you probably haven't done that if ever. Uh, maybe back in squirts or peewees or something like that, but. Uh, how do you mentally and physically prepare yourself for for what lies ahead of you right before Thanksgiving? Oh, we just got to take it a day at a time. Before we got to be, we got to know that what's coming up on the weekend. It's going to probably be a little lighter on like the weekdays. Trying to plan here, special focus on like rehab or stuff during the week. Try to make sure your bodies are healthy for Friday, Saturday, and. Like when those games are over, we gotta be working on our health there. Make sure we're eating right, and then getting the proper rest Sunday where we rec- can recover. Cause Monday it's a quick turnaround, and uh, we don't ever have really this this many games back to back. So it's like a wake up call for us. It's like, and it's something I think this team is ready for. Cause it's that battle, that will, and that fight that we could bring. And I think we all we have that as a team and our identity. So it's just. It's something that I'm looking forward to see how we react, but it's definitely going to be a, a toll on our bodies. I'm, a, I'm curious to see how, how we fare with this four games. <laughs> I, uh, I talked to your teammate, Brandon Cook, and uh, he gave me basically uh, one, one word. He said 12, and I said 12 what? He said 12 points. This means 12 points for us in the Atlantic Hockey standings. We're going to go get them. Yep. I, li- I like that. That's, that's exactly true. Our goal is to win them all, and uh, it's just one game at a time. And uh, we have that, and I think we're going to go out there and uh, prove who we are in these twelve ga- in these four games for the twelve points. Right. And uh, I don't know, I what he how his mentality is is how the team is. We we're ready to win, we're ready to attack, and we don't care what's on the flip side of it. This is this is our battle right now, and uh, it's just about every game seizing the opportunity, getting every chance, and uh, ending up with twelve points at the end of the weekend. Okay, we go on forever. Two final ones for you, though. Right. Uh, <laughs> the first one is tell everybody out there about your – I know your game. I've watched you enough now to know your game. Tell everybody what you like to do and what makes you the player that you are. Um, I like to be a pest. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's what I've learned over time. It's also the, one of the most effective, in my opinion. Uh, just getting it under people's skin, not really saying anything. It's just like – hitting people all the time. It's not like cheap hits. It's just like constantly being in their in their face, constantly causing pressure, just letting them know I'm there. Like It's just like that bump now and then, here and there, always going to the net hard. Make sure like – it's just it's just basically being a pest is what it comes down to. But it's, it's, it's a way of playing the game, and it, it works out. You see like Marshan plays that way where it's like yeah. he's always there, but like he's an amazing player. Yep. It's it's an element to the game that that brings a lot to the team because it's just wearing down people. Maybe you draw penalties from it because people get frustrated, and it's yep. just about controlling your emotions. And if I like have the capability to go out there and keep my cool, not respond to anything, and try to get someone to hit me weird because or slash me because they're angry because <laughs> I'm just playing the normal game, but they just don't like how it is because it's maybe a little harder than they're used to or being hit a little too many times. That's something I'm proud of, and that's that's like a win in my book if I could draw a penalty for our power play to go out there or something like that. Well said. Final one for you is not hockey-related. It's academy-related, but geospatial science? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Tell us what that is. <laughs> the way I describe it is it is glorified mapping. Um, <laughs> I, I, um, I had a hard time trying to find my major here. It's coming down to the last, and uh, 
when I, I started reading through it and like looking into the things I could do with it and the more I read, I was like, wow, this is actually something I could really get into. I could do, it's like you could use satellite remote sensing. You could look into different things around the world and like understand problems, react to different issues. It's something that I want to use because I want to try to do it towards helping people. My end goal is like a firefighter, disaster relief. I want to do something on that side and this gives me the opportunity to like use satellite imagery to understand what's going on in an area post disaster or something or like post fire. What areas are like going to possibly get burnt down or like what areas are safer. And it's just, it gives you so many opportunities and it's it's a growing field that like helps understand most of the world and uh it's a weird one and at first I, i'm like what what is this I, I read it and i'm like i don't know what this is but the more i've gotten and i've started to take more classes it's just it's just sort of learning more about the world and like being able to fix some issues that you could see and it's not always like very visual like like remote sensing we go into yeah. different radar stuff and it tells you so much more about the world that you don't see when you look at it because they have there's so much to it and I don't want to get fully in depth into it because it's just it goes on for forever but when it came I'm at, I think I'm the first hockey player to do it here and um, hopefully not the last because it's actually it's the more I've got dove into it it's I could see the benefit of how impactful this is going to be in the future and what how it is already now and the developments we're making with it so well, folks, I feel better already knowing this guy has got it in his hands. So, Blake Bride, thanks for spending some time with us. Good luck this weekend in this brutal uh, four games in five days. Uh, you're a Falcon. You're going to come through with flying colors. Thanks for spending some time. Oh, thank you very much. Appreciate it, man.